Hey, how you doing friends? It's been a while and this video opening is a little homage to a very good YouTuber who is apparently thinking about giving up YouTube. Please don't do it, Mercurial number six. We love watching your videos. So, this is a homage to you my friend and from Mercurial number six to studio build number 10. Okay, so the last studio build video was four months ago in February. Why has it taken so long to bring you an update, you might ask? Well, simply put, I wanted to discipline myself not to continue on with doing stuff on the inside until I'd finished the outside. And there's plenty to do on the outside. Yeah, the last time I saw you, I'd just finished flooring and cladding the outside of the building. But I had to leave the outside cladding for at least three months to weather in before I could do the final pinning and painting treatment, which I've now done. And we're going to go and have a little look at that in a moment. I chose a couple of greys, actually, that I thought would complement the slate roof on our home. Once the outside was painted, it was all ready to have the pathway up to the studio built. Originally, I thought about having wooden decking, but then I had second thoughts on that. You see, wooden decking can be a bit Bon Jovi, slippery when wet. <laughs> Sorry, terrible joke. But I decided that with the combination of the wet and the willow tree leaves that are right next to it there, that it would probably become a bit dangerous. And so I decided to take the plunge and spend a little bit more and go for a natural stone patio pathway up to it and I found some local black limestone that looks absolutely fantastic and I got a good friend of mine in to come and lay it for me because there was no way that I was going to get around to doing the patio work. So I'm ever so glad I did though because he's done an awesome job as you'll see. Looking back over the job I'm really glad I have taken my time and decided things slowly and not rush things because it's meant a much better and often a more cost effective job in the long run. So to any of you who are thinking of having a similar project built or any project done, uh, I would definitely recommend taking your time, looking at all the options and weighing up the options because I've changed lots as a result of what you, my subscribers, have uh, suggested and sent me. I really am over the moon with the finished result but let's see what you think. Should we go and have a look? So here's the outside and the color scheme. I used cuprinol wood treatment as I've always found it lasts really well and it's well worth the extra cost. The colors for anyone who's interested are from the shades range. The light gray is dusky gem and the dark gray is urban slate. I think they contrast really nicely and uh, I decided to carry the contrasting colours over to our pergola too. The black limestone paving looks nice next to the dusky gem and I think the urban slate is reflected quite nicely in the soffit of the building as well. However I am now ready to start kitting out the inside and I'd love your input on that. Well we certainly have plenty of space out here folks. You'll probably recall from my first video that I want to keep it as a multi-use space though. So there's lots of things to consider and I'd like your opinion on a few of them. First and foremost, I am seriously considering what we do out here in terms of soundproofing. And initially I'd suggested that we would put some big panels on the wall and I've got three panels as you know and my intention was to insulate them and wrap them in nice colourful cloth and then pin hinge them to the wall so that they can be hinged out to create different sized spaces out here. However, I think they might be a little bit overbearing and I'm not certain that there's space between the wall hung radiators and the plug outlets on the wall. So. I would like to think that maybe you've got ideas, maybe you've seen stuff elsewhere online that you could suggest for that. Second thing is, I need to get a sofa out here because obviously it's going to be multi-use. I've purposely kept the end wall down here completely blank so that we can use this as a home cinema as well. So the sofa will be useful for that. I'm also thinking about it for the YouTube videos, getting our funky sofa back 
and also I'm thinking of making it a sofa bed so that we can use this as an overflow space to house guests overnight if we need to. So all of that good stuff. Additionally, because of the space saving element, I've seriously reconsidered whether or not to go for an electronic drum kit. After seeing what Willem managed to do with my track and also the latest track I've put out, Chickens May Run, I used a drum sample and chopped it all up and put it into the, the shape that I needed it for the song. And that's ever so easy to do. And the thing with an electronic drum kit, other than the cost of course, is that it will take up a huge amount of space out here. And my drummer presently has an electronic kit, so if we ever need to do some recording here with that, he can always bring that over. And I can also do some recording of the drums at our rehearsal studios and then come back and simply track the other tracks and do the final mixing here. So I'm umming and ahhing about the electronic kit. Let me know what you think. I'm also thinking about building a speaker cab enclosure, soundproof enclosure, so that I can put a 4x12 and that lovely vintage 30 um, Harley Benton 2x12 in it to mic up with the classic SM57. Uh, I think that will be worthwhile, but maybe we can build that into some sort of a seat trunk or something like that. And finally, I'm thinking of a stand-up desk. Well, at least an adjustable, height adjustable desk, and also to have something that's on wheels. I can't seem to find anything that fulfills both of those criteria out there online at the moment. So if you know of anything, please send me a link or let me know because I'd really like the flexibility of being able to raise the desk and stand behind it. Also, won't do this big old stomach any harm to lose some weight. So that is one aspect of it. And secondly, being on wheels and height adjustable, I'll be able to move it around and it will be really flexible for whatever I use it for. So making YouTube videos, demonstrating guitars, all that sort of good stuff will be much, much easier on a desk that's that flexible to move around and height adjust. So if you've got any ideas there, please let me know. One final thing is soundproofing. In addition to changing my mind about the baffles on the walls, I need something that's really flexible and removable so that it doesn't permanently have to be up on the walls. So if you've got any idea about portable, temporary sound insulation ideas to get rid of this lovely reverb, then please let me know that as well. So that's where we're at folks, and I really do want to thank you all for your kindness and help in sending in so many suggestions throughout this build process. They really have influenced me. In fact, to the extent that one of my excellent subscribers sent me a suggestion for a name for the studio. Unfortunately, I've lost your details. I can't for the life of me remember who you are, but please get in touch because I would like to credit you with this because what you suggested was that we, in honour of that little tree that we had to get rid of in order to make space for the studio, that we call it Bay Tree Studio. And I've decided that I like that so much, I'm going to use it. So thank you to that subscriber, whoever you were. So that's the studio build update, and there's plenty more coming really soon. I've also got another guitar coming on its way from China, and uh, in my quest for decent, cheap guitars uh, as an alternative to the fakes. And it's really nice to say that after my own suggestions, Bad Cat made their own brand of guitar in China. And now there's another brand out there. I'm not going to name it yet, but I've gone with them. And I've got a guitar that I think all of you, my regular subscribers, would like to see. And I'm not going to tell you what it is either. We'll have to wait to the unboxing, which will hopefully be really soon. It's in the UK, currently stuck for at least a week in customs. So we've got to keep our fingers crossed on that one, but hopefully coming real soon. So I hope you've enjoyed this week's video and please don't give up Mercurial number six. We love you. I'll be back really soon with another video. In the meantime, take good care of each other, folks.